So if the breath has been really shallow and quick throughout the day, this is our chance to start deepening and slowing it down. breath teaches us so much about how we're receiving life. Breath can also help us to calm, to relax, to become at peace. be this reminder through class over and over again a little reminder about connecting with breath returning to it over and over and we'll take a moment here to establish an intention for our class the intention that I was thinking of for today is the intention of trying to find peace from within There was, earlier this week, I was kind of just looking up out of curiosity, numbers about um, how fast the winds are in tornadoes and hurricanes. And, you know, what is actually the process that's going on in those situations? And those storms are either things that come quick and powerful like a tornado, or in the case of hurricanes, their power tends to be not quite so much in how fast the speed wind is, but how long it lasts and just constantly, you know, hitting on the same place over and over and over again until the structures weaken. So those are two different ways that life can hit us. It can be quick and painful or it can be that persistent hitting and you know just driving at you. And those are the storms that, that life sends at us. But yet in both situations, there's the eye of the storm where it's much more calm. And so that is us coming within, turning inward to our breath, to the power of the mind, to this peace that can be established and connected with. And so that's our intention today, to tune into that calm, because life will give us those storms, whether we want it or not. So we're turning over and over and over again to that peace. So with this idea to help get us started today, let's begin. We'll start off with the knees gently coming into the chest. If the knees come in, have a hand on each knee. Gentle rocking is absolutely welcome. That can give us a chance to kind of massage through some of that low back tightness. It's nice and easy. As the arms start to spread open on the floor to left and right, allow knees an opportunity to start falling over to the left. Sometimes people like to scoot the bolster in under the knees. That can be a really comforting version of the twist. If you prefer to not, that's okay too. You can use gravity to help you release those muscles even deeper. And feel how this twist is kind of similar to a storm. You've got the upper body going in one direction and the lower body twisting to the other side. So note that in this case, the center is the breath. Notice how the breath affects this pose. The inhales take us out just a little bit out of the twist. And the exhales deepen it, helping the muscles relax into it just a little bit more. I'm connecting to that breath. Let it be more like a massage than like a chaos. 
means. Like we don't necessarily have to define what's good, bad, right, or wrong. Maybe it's like how the wildfire can have really powerful, important purposes to the structure of the forest. There's some seeds that can only germinate with that craziness. So no judgment, but just this calm breath to return us back into presence. Let's take about three more breaths for this first half of the twist. breath finishes gently let the knees start to rise maybe take a couple of seconds just to rock on that low back again hands on knees easy movement when you're ready the knees can start to fall over to right as the arms spread away Sometimes the first couple of breaths is that intense point. Yep, I'm hearing it in a couple of people's breaths. <laughs> it's more intense on the muscles at first. It doesn't have to necessarily stay there. Know that you always have those options to slide the bolster in underneath if you'd like. But that craziness that really deep intensity doesn't have to be the permanent situation. It's almost more of a mental game than anything else, but it's that attempt to try to calm down the storm, try to return to the center, just focus on breath. even deeper perhaps see if the breath can go a little slower just a little experiment how relaxed can we go into that breath cycle here for this half. Nice exhale. And then as the knees gently lift back up, the hand on each knee takes us to this space of gentle massage for low back. Another easy moment there.
front back feels comfortable, ready to move on. We're going to work our way up to a seated place. Oftentimes in restorative yoga, we come to seated by taking a fetal position and then pressing our way up. You can come up other ways as well, however you'd like. From the seated shape, eventually when we get there, no rush. We're going to go into a wide angle forward fold. So legs start to open. Tune into how the back and the hips feel right here. If it feels like you're being pulled backwards, my recommendation is sit on the bolster. If this is pretty easy, just sitting here in general, then you have that option to bring the bolster in front of you. Maybe at a nice, easy, low height, maybe going a little bit taller or even like a tent, setting the forehead down. This bolster has those various ways that we can rest onto it to make our experience supported through the back. Set yourself up in a way that's comfortable and yet opening for the body. Whatever that looks like today is beautiful. After a couple of breaths, our body changes and we want to change with it. So maybe bolster height changes, you know, just to a new place, but maybe not. If you're at the tent before, sometimes I'll lift the bolster up to this kind of medium spot. It's kind of like a halfway point, but don't feel forced to. This is just an option if the body is happy. Perhaps it's useful to visualize an ocean wave. If you're in hell, the current flows one direction. With the exhale, it goes back out the other direction. Helping to calm and cleanse and refresh all the cells of your body with that huge sweeping action one direction and back out the other. pacing of the breath picked up because we're leaning forward. If so, is there anything we can do to help slow it down just a little?
in this space, about three more breaths, deep and full. breath finishes, we rise upright to help balance out the spine from that forward fold. We're going to aim for a back bend. I'm going to offer two options and either option can have the legs in any arrangement. Legs can be cross leg, cobbler, straight, whatever feels good. Option one tends to be a little bit more gentle for the back. It's the bolster just long ways behind you. This particular option offers an option for elbows to open so that you can open pecs. If that gets tiring, just drop hands at the sides. So that's option one. Option two is to scoot the ball, bolster the short ways, or even tilt it up, going much higher into the low back. This one offers a much deeper back bend, going up and over. So you get to choose whatever feels more like what your body would would respond to best at this point. If at any point one gets tiring and you want to switch to the other, you're not stuck. Just let your body open in the way that feels useful at this point. Maybe elbows opening like that football goal post, maybe not. Don't feel like you have to be stuck in any one thing that you decide. Even the legs, maybe they start off it doing one thing, and after a little while, they decide to switch, and that's okay. Giving ourselves grace and space. To me, that's where the peace comes in. If I force my body to do something, that's showing me that I'm much more in the mental space. The mind is saying the body needs to do this. If I'm constantly adjusting to how the sensations are, that shows me I'm in my body space. It's where we're constantly adjusting because we're constantly trying to tune in and listen what would be the highest good at this point. conscious and present in this space for about five more breaths. Before we get up, let's take a moment to stretch the right arm 
to the space above the crown of the head. If the, the body is too close to the back wall, you can extend the right elbow to that space above your head instead. So either way, right arm or right elbow reaching to that back wall. This might scoot your shoulders a little bit off the left side of bolster. Just a breath or so right there. And then switch it out, left arm stretching to that space, right above the head. Next inhale. And exhale. You get to choose how you're coming up. You can either roll through fetal position to the side or work your elbows underneath you. On your hands and gently rising up that way. Good. Let's work into another forward fold. Feeling how this is a, helping the spine going this forward backward motion, helping it open up little by little. So this one's going to be a cobbler's pose. Bottoms of feet touch, but I'm not super strict today. You could choose to bring the feet close. That's a lot deeper in hips or you could choose to extend the feet a lot further forward. That tends to get us more into the back muscles. So you choose. I personally love using the bolster. So any height, again, bolster in front of us could be welcome or maybe not. You get to choose. Let's start to feel your body release. Again, finding that presence. Remember you can switch anything up as needed. of your body that are holding tension without you realizing it. Sometimes that's hands. You don't realize it, but you're clenching them. Sometimes it's jaw or even tongue kind of pressing really intensely against the roof of mouth. And sometimes it's more like very tiny muscle groups like inner and outer quarters of eyes. So as you do a little body scan, See if there's any clenching that can be released, helping us to more fully come into the peace within.
about three more breaths of this beautiful space. How slow can they be? The third breath wraps up. Gently the spine rises. We start to take the bolster long ways behind our back. And we flip both knees to point to the right side of our mat, that long edge. So pointing right the knees over to the front door side of the room. to set up for a, a nice supported twist from here. So one hand finds the floor on either side of the bolster. You try to twist sternum down to the bolster. So you'll place the bolster actually on the mat. Like this. Yep, just like that. Good. So once you've got your body in this twist, bend the elbows to lower yourself down into the twist. Good, you get to choose which ear is there. Some people like that extra neck twist. Some people don't really want it. So you get to choose. Set up the arms comfortably. As we lower them down, they kind of tend to have more tension. So go ahead and slide them to a more comfortable arrangement, whatever that looks like. And fill the new areas of your back that are receiving something. Maybe this is further down, closer to the hip area. Maybe it's higher up, closer to shoulder area. If ever you feel like you want to increase something, one option you could implement at any point is your top knee sliding backwards any amount. So you don't have to take that. Knee stacked is also beautiful. It just adds a little bit more length, getting us into psoas, slightly deeper rotation. So there are options if you want it. breath for this half. And begin to slide the hands in under shoulders. When you're ready to press into the hands, feel the spine lifting up. We'll start to switch our body over to the second half. So the knees will need to flip over to face the other side of the mat. Same approach when you get there. One hand on each side of the bolster, twist the sternum down, and then bend the elbows to lower down. Take 
don't have too much tension in the arms and hands when you're settled down. And no, no pressure if it takes a little bit of time to get comfortable. Top knee ever wants to slide backwards any amount, that is an option. You don't have to take it. bolster away for the child have that option either way we're facing our bolster we're allowing the bolster to be under forehead so that way nose is not squished and as we go into a child's pose we're also setting up a excuse me a shoulder stretch so your left arm is going to stay parallel to the bolster reaching forward forehead down and then this right arm is going to be sliding under and through that little triangle, that armpit space of the left side. Some of us like to rock onto kind of the right temple instead of the middle of the forehead being masked, so that would be fine. So how you can breathe and relax that right shoulder, helping it to dip a little bit closer to ground. At any point you prefer bolster not to be there, that's okay, you can slide it away. Or bolsters getting closer could be more comfortable, so your choice. But find a way that your body can be comfortable, helping to release through low back, release through shoulder.
two more breaths for this first half. Second breath, we'll begin to switch off the arms. So whatever you need to do to be comfortable, we begin to slide the right arm forward, thread the left arm under and through. Bolster can be scooted nice and close. Bolster can be slid away entirely. It's all up to you. But see how much you can continue to try to allow left shoulder to dip further and further toward ground. Kind of rotating that space into openness. Second breath, we start to unwind and rise. We all currently have the bolster in this long arrangement, so flip it to the short arrangement, leaving it closer to top of that. And then we're going to come to sit onto the bolster. Do a couple of different things. So just start off facing forward to mirror. Just start off easy cross leg while we focus on doing some wrist stretches. This will also give a little bit of blood back to the legs if it felt kind of cramped for that child's pose. So for these wrist stretches, clasp the hands together, leave the base of the palms touching, and then start to trace kind of like an a figure eight or an infinity sign. Just letting those wrists rotate. Now release the base of the palms from that touching and then expand the arms forward. Now the left hand gets pulled closer to the heart. You should feel the right back of the wrist stretching. We'll switch to the left wrist giving the stretch. away facing toward the front and then it's the other half of the wrist getting the stretch so left hand again pulls closer to heart and then that gets that second half of the right wrist Release. It's 
sometimes I'll just let the wrist roll out on their own and sometimes I'll shake them. So whatever feels best. Take a moment with Malasana squat, this restorative version. So elbows come in to help press the knees a little wider. As the spine gets stacked up nice and tall, we recognize if we have this tendency to lean back, the feet can slide further forward. So that's an option. Let's use this to help work through some shoulder tightness. So let's dip the forehead down through the center, letting the head be heavy. From here, slowly roll the right ear over the right shoulder. And roll forehead down through the center. Left ear rolls over left shoulder. And head back to center. Once more to each side, rolling right ear over right shoulder. And down. And left ear over left shoulder. And down. Beautiful. With a soft release. The feet can slide a bit closer together. We're going to work our way into kind of like a supported bridge pose. So you're working your hands to the floor behind you, but you want to make sure that your sacrum stays on the bolster. So you might need to scoot your sacrum for further forward before you lower down to elbows. And then widening the elbows out, you'll lay all the way down onto your back. You should have hips on the bolster at that point. So go ahead and slide the elbows out. You're laying all the way onto your back. Take your time. Yeah, no rush. You're good. Beautiful. So from here, we're going to try a couple of different things. The first thing is right leg sliding on the floor closer to the mirror. So how that helps Stretch the front of the right hip, that psoas area. Easy breaths flowing, good deep inhales. Nice exhales. Slide this right foot back in, and then give the left leg a turn, so sliding that one out. back in and from here one knee at a time rises up stacking above the hips so there's a couple of different poses that you can play with once you've got both knees up so one option would be a nice variation of a happy baby pose so that would be knees going wide grab onto the feet because the hips are lifted, this allows you to really pull the knees open. So that's one pose you could play with here. Yep, it's like that happy baby grabbing toward calves, ankles, or feet. Another option 
is a restorative version of a shoulder stand, which would be both legs floating directly upright. There's usually one point at which the legs practically float. So sometimes that's a little bit closer for some people, sometimes it's a little bit further, but you kind of find the point where it doesn't take muscular effort to leave the legs there. So that's our second option for those that want this version. The third option would be bringing these straight legs a bit closer to the torso, kind of like a plow pose. You are welcome to support the weight of the legs with the hands on the thighs or the shins. I'm giving the legs some, yep, just like that. Just giving the legs something to kind of rest the weight on to. So these are all options that you can play with. We'll be here a little bit longer. So whatever felt best, if you wanted to go back to happy baby, that's fine. If you liked the shoulder stand variation or just anything else that feels good, give it a little bit of time. As the legs are above the heart, this is super, super beneficial for helping to just drain some of the blood and lymph that tends to accumulate in the legs right out. from this point on be up to you. If you are loving the shake that you got into and you want to be here a bit longer, keep on exploring it. There's nothing wrong with that. At any point that you'd like to start returning the feet to the floor, you'll gently bend the knees, and let them drop down one at a time. You could take some time for both heels to slide out if you wanted to from that back bend shake. Or if you're ready for your Shavasana, sooner or later you can get into that just by scooting the bolster under knees or scooting your body, kind of shimmying it backwards past the bolster. So whatever feels more useful. So all of this is at your pace. You can stay in any of these shapes as long as they're helpful. Or you can move backwards into that Shavasana bolster under knees if you like that. Think of how these various poses that we've explored have helped us to touch into lots of different points in the body. And maybe some points of the body are practically in a storm 24 seven. So let this Shavasana be kind of like the reset. It helps to remind the body you know what? I can choose calmness and stillness sometimes. I don't always have to be fast paced. I don't always have to be shifting. I can have stillness and peace just by returning to the breath, at least in this moment. So we'll be here for several minutes. Breath just gets to flow and that's Easy deep inhales, long exhales. We'll get our heat bumped up just a little bit so nobody gets cold. Adjust.
where we begin to deepen our inhales. Introduce a little movements back to fingers and toes, ankles and wrists. Stretching out in ways that feel really good for the body. Perhaps eventually taking a fetal position if you like that. Just rolling off to one side. body a few bonus breaths. Maybe three or four really good deep cycles. Until sooner or later you feel ready to rise. No sense of rush. Eventually, when we're up, we'll find our hands joined together in front of the heart. We'll allow ourselves a moment to connect back to that intention of the peace that can be found within. No matter what types of craziness, what storms life will throw at us, we can recognize that by going inward, we can find that eye of the storm, the peace, the calm. We can return to that state of centeredness, groundedness, kind of confidence and assuredness in who we are, where we're going. So with this sense of peace to help lead us on, let's wrap up the time we got to share together with the sound of OM. Deep inhale now. May we be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Namaste. Namaste.